how can a black person be a libertarian, which is a consistent cry that I get. I was on a talk show recently in New York, and I was having a debate against a gentleman who was in favor of affirmative action. And I said, well, affirmative action is premised on three things, all of which I reject. The first is that the white man is so racist, so biased, so bigoted, so stupid, that he will not do that which is in his best interest, which is to hire the most qualified, the most talented. So the second is that you owe us. And I said, who can't make that claim? Who in this room cannot trace his or her ancestry to a point in time where his or her ancestors were screwed over by somebody at some time for some reason? <laughs> Japanese. Japanese could not purchase farmland here in California. There were laws that forbade Japanese from purchasing and owning farmland. Chinese were the first group to be specifically excluded by anti-immigration laws. Women could not vote until the 1920s. Who can't make that claim? All a state can be is just in its own time. And that is what we're striving to be. The other reason, seldom stated out loud, is we can't make it on our own. We need a pass. We need a boost. We can't compete. We're not smart enough. We're not bright enough. We're not hardworking enough. And I most assuredly reject that. When I said to this man that I was a libertarian, he said, wait a second, libertarian? I, I had the libertarian candidate for vice governor of New York on my show. And I asked him, when you were in the Senate in the mid-60s, would you have voted in favor or against the civil rights legislation in 1964? And this man said he would have voted against it. So I'm asking you, Larry Elder, what would you have done? And I said, well, to the extent that those laws mandate any kind of interference in the private sector, yes, I would have voted against it. He went ballistic. <laughs> I was a Nazi and a Tom. And he said, let me give you an example to show you how stupid you are. You're driving down a road in Mississippi and it's a small town and you're out of gas and you need to use the restroom. So you pull into a gas station and the guy says, I'm sorry, we don't serve niggers here and you're not gonna use my restroom. Is that acceptable to you? I said, of course it's not acceptable to me on an emotional level, but let me ask you a question. How come it doesn't happen now? He said, what do you mean? I said, all the towns, all the villages, all the one-horse towns in all of America, whites outnumber blacks. There aren't enough constables in the country to stop white people if they were in fact determined to do just what you say. I'll tell you why they, why they won't do it. They want my $20. I lived in Cleveland for a number of years and there was a man who wanted to buy the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team which was not doing well commercially uh, or athletically and he publicly stated, publicly stated, one of the all-time bonehead out loud statements to Joe over here, when I purchase the team I intend to hire more white players. He bought the team and he proceeded to do just that. Has anybody ever heard of Mike Bratz? Point taken. <laughs> the team was an was a athletic disaster. More importantly, it was a commercial disaster. Surprise, surprise, he found out that people wanted a winner. And they didn't care about the racial composition of the team. Marge Schott is the owner of the Cincinnati Reds. As you know, she collects Nazi memorabilia. They have her on tape referring to her players as niggers. Yet look at her lineup. Jose Rijo, Brent Larkin, Eric Davis, why? Because she cannot compete without talented black and Latin ball players. There's nothing she can do about it if she wants a competitive team. As much as we salute Branch Rickey for hiring Jackie Robinson, Branch Rickey did not have altruism as his motivation. He wanted to beat the damn Yankees and he needed a good infielder. <laughs> he also noticed that the Kansas City Monarchs, the Negro League team in Kansas City, would outdraw the Kansas City Athletics and he saw the large untapped gate for the black market that he could get and capture by hiring Jackie Robinson. Have you been following this flap with Casey Martin, the golfer who wants to participate in the PGA? We talked about that issue on my show 
And I, like a lot of people, are very upset that there is even something called the Americans with Disabilities Act, let alone that Mr. Martin would sue under it in order to play in the PGA. And I said, you know what's going on here? The PGA is simply being stupid. They are missing a wonderful marketing opportunity. Can you imagine the ratings when this person is paired with Tiger Woods on Saturday morning, on Sunday morning? Can you imagine 50 million Americans with disabilities cheering for Casey Martin? You guys are simply being foolish. Well, because of the courts, Mr. Martin can now play, and all of a sudden, the PGA is in a full retreat, not because of the court decision, but because right-thinking people were annoyed that this man, whose leg is withered and will likely be amputated in seven days, cannot play. All of a sudden, Arnold Palmer, who testified against him in trial on behalf of the PGA, remembered that his father had polio and remembered that it's a swell thing for people with handicaps to play. That's the marketplace speaking.